Do you have video clips or screencast footage with sensitive information that you want to hide for privacy or security reasons? In this video, you're going to see how to use Camtasia's blur annotation so that you can visually blur faces, text, and even moving objects to support your privacy needs. And later in the video, I share a bonus example with a tip on applying the blur effect to motion backgrounds with text effects. Let's dive in! Hey, it's Gord here. Welcome! If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit that subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. Okay, so we're inside Camtasia now, and as you see on the left side here, we have our annotations, and over here, this uh, teardrop or water droplet category is called special, and under there, there's the blur effect, and there's also pixelate. We could use pixelate as well sometimes when we're trying to uh, blur out or hide uh, data, but we're using the blur effect for what we're doing today. So you can see, I can just drag it on here, or I could put it on the timeline and uh, we can easily resize it to be whatever size we want. And then on the property side here, we have the ability to change the intensity. Okay, you could also invert, which would mean blur everything but the area covered by the annotation. So we're gonna take the invert off. This is just a toss on the screen and show you that here in our example, we already have two blur effects put on, one here, which is just covering the individual's, you know, smile on their face. Like you may feel that you don't need that. I'm just doing it to show you to cover both situations. So we're using 100% intensity. So that's pretty straightforward, whether it's text or faces, you could just, you know, deal with this as uh, it's just a static effect that you're putting on screen and that covers your situation. It may also be the case that you want to maybe just resize your image and filter out what you don't want and don't even use the blur effect. So in this case, you can see here, we've just focused in on the image and scaled it up and we, we're not using the blur effect at all. So just showing you different ways to solve the problem. In example two, there is some sensitive information like email address and phone number if we didn't want those to be shared. So let's just pretend we were creating a contact for me and we just wanted to get to, you know, hiding the information around email address and phone number. So I'm just entering those in and showing you how we would mask them. In this next example, we have an email address here that we're going to want to mask. But what's tricky here is that there's a movement in the email. So you can see the address is showing there now, but as soon as I scroll, it shifts up. And if I scroll down, it shifts down, back up, now disappears. So we have to manage that by using the blur effect. So to put things in context as to how we got the blur effect to work here, you have to see that there's several of these areas on here on the blur right here, which was just done by adding it to the timeline. We have all these custom animations. So you can see here this little set as I move back and forth, scrub back and forth, you can see that the email address is covered as it moves. In the next set, same thing, because it moves down, then moves back up, then moves off screen invisible, and then back down. So there are several sets of these. And what you have to do is go to animations. And what you're doing in essence is putting on, so here's one animation and you're going to tighten it up. So in the tightest form, it's just like a frame or two. And then you would add another frame, but the end point would be at each time, at each time where the, the um, movement, the end position of a, of a scroll move or which usually happens just over the sequence of a frame or two. So I'm just going to remove those. Just to, that was just to show you how we added things in. But now let's zoom in and see what happens here. So this is the finessing I did. And you can see here, this is zoomed all the way out for us to see. So if we come near the start here, you can see at the start position that you see the, the um, blur effect it's covering. Then when we go to the next position, you can see it's moved up. And then at the next endpoint, 
it's moved up a little more and then on the next endpoint for the next keyframe even higher so you're basically just finessing and putting the uh, custom animations back to back and setting the end key point position where you need it to be so there's no need to go into details basically each of the next series of of these um, custom animations were added using the similar approach and as you can see they're very tight together just maybe a frame or two apart each one of them in this next blur effect example we have my buddies nick nimmin and brian g johnson here at vid summit and as you can see there's a hotel employee that comes into the picture and it starts back here right about there as you can see in the middle between the two of them so what can we do if we want to get you know to make his face not recognizable well we can use the blur effect so let's zoom in on what i've been doing here and uh see what we can find okay so in this first one you can see that there's our blur effect it's here in the middle and we start right here and we fade it in so the transition here i made 15 frames long so it fades in as his face comes in to play and the first end keyframe ends right here and then the next one i moved uh i actually did a resizing so if you can see going from this keyframe to this keyframe things are a little shorter in the length and then to go to the next keyframe as brian's shoulders moving closer to nick i decided to add another custom animation in order to to shorten the size and then as brian's shoulder moves closer in to tighten again the the blur effect has been shortened up again now when we go further you can see that now the employee has gone behind nick's back and in order to to um, see what's going on there we need to move along and when, when does it when does he appear next so where i have the next blur effect and as you can see right now where it starts right here we have the blur effect where his face is starting to come in and then a little further along so nick's nick's moving so you can see in this passage so i it's the actual size of the blur is a little bigger and it ends at this point because what we want to do is uh, have one more keyframe here where again it's minimized and eventually as he gets behind nick's arm the blur effect's gone so we don't need anything for that moment and then it starts up again right here and then at the end of that first keyframe you can see that the size is getting a little bigger and then a little bigger again as we move along and then for the last one even bigger again so now it all if you watch it all it all executes nice and smoothly right across so we actually needed to put in three blur effects with a whole bunch of keyframes so this is a lot of work similar to what we had to do with the text but here you can see we're actually using we're actually tracking a person walking which is quite amazing that you can do this now let's look at the bonus example i have this nice clip of denver at night in the city with showing beautiful lights flashing and color and movement but i wanted to add a quote to that so look what happens when we add the quote okay so here it is it transitions in and there's a nice quote summer nights and city lights as you can see it's pretty hard to make out the lettering very clearly with um, the detail in the background and the brightness and the time lapse going on so what can we do to make that better well we can actually add a blur so this time i added a blur in and you can see here the blur the blur in this is at 65 so the intensity was was dialed down to 65 i could have had it up at 100 and for more blur or bring it back down to about 65 or even go lower so as you can see there's some threshold at, after which you lose more detail of the background and then the text becomes more clear so if we just put this back at 65 and just play this you can see how nice this looks emphasizing the the text and showing some of the flashing lights but again a lot of the detail is lost so what can i do to keep the detail utilize the blur and take it to the next level well i added a shape layer 
and here. So watch this. Let's just play and see what I got here. So now you can see we got a lot of detail. We have our quote in there. There's, there's um, a, a shape layer, which was just a rectangle that I put on and colored it to match something in the background. There's the text, and then there, there, there's the, uh, the shape layer, okay, of the rectangle. And there's everything nicely aligned. But look at what's different this time. Under the blur, I, I dialed it down to just eight. So, so we got a lot more detail showing in the background. And so that makes the text still stand out nicely. And so we got like a compromise solution where we have a lot more detail showing in the background with the, with the time lapse and we can still read the quote nicely. Wow. Adding the blur annotation is great for protecting or hiding sensitive information. And as we saw, you can use the blur annotation for other cool things like blurring motion backgrounds with text effects. To learn more great special effects in Camtasia with kinetic text, be sure to click on the link for the playlist featured on this page, or click on the link in the video description below. And if you need any training assistance with Camtasia or help in editing and producing your videos or screencasts, be sure to reach out to me through my website, gordeisman.com. See you in another video soon.